Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Midweek Refill. I'm your host, Bishop A. Reginald Littman, Senior Pastor of New Mountaintop Church, and I'm excited to welcome you to session number four. Let me begin with a question. Have you ever had to deal with people that were not so easy to get along with? Where it seemed as if unity was something that they really didn't want? Well, in this episode of our series about finding peace when life spins out of control, we're going to be talking about gathering in peace. We're going to look at a passage from the book of Romans and learn some very powerful principles that will help us to discover peace as we gather in peace, even when life is spinning out of control. You're watching the Midweek Refill with Bishop A. Reginald Littman. I'll be right back after this. And welcome back to episode four in this wonderful series about finding peace when life spins out of control. We definitely want you to hit that like button, to share, to subscribe, to leave a comment, thumbs up, and all of that good kind of stuff. It helps us to be found in the crowded algorithms of social media platforms just like this. And if you're getting any benefit whatsoever out of this teaching, I want you to definitely let us know in the comments what speaks to you, what jarred a new thought, what triggered something positive or even impactful in you. And so I'm excited about this series and I'm definitely excited about you being here. Oh, here's the most important thing. Don't forget that in the description box below, there is a link there where you can download a free PDF ebook that goes right along with this study. You'll find some of the things that I'll share with you along with wonderful, wonderful analogies and anecdotes and stories that you can read that will brighten up your day and even give you some new ways to apply the teachings as we go along each and every session. There are discussion questions that are also in the PDF handout. You can even read ahead if you want to. But most importantly, I want you to get it so you can share it with those you love. Because somebody you know is going to have some situations where life spins out of control. So make sure you grab that and share that along with this series with somebody you love. Hey, let's jump right into session four as we talk about gathering in peace. Our verse for this week comes from the book of Romans. And in the book of Romans, we find these words in chapter 14, verse number 19. And it reads like this. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. Now, the book of Romans is really interesting. It was authored by the Apostle Paul. This is one of his first Pauline epistles. And its whole purpose was to unite both the Jewish Christians and the Gentile Christians there in Rome. He was trying to pull them together to bring a sense of harmony, union, and unity amongst these believers because there was disparity and division, because some of them were Jews and they looked upon non-Jews, AKA Gentiles, eh, with a certain sort of disdain. And equally, they also had an additional challenge as Jews because they had come out of a very ritualistic Judaism mindset that held tightly to the laws of Moses. And so for them, this was really an introduction to a new way of thinking, which may have been why the Christians in that day and time were first called the people of the way, because they had now discovered a new way to live. And that was through the grace, the liberty, and the goodness and kindness that came through 
a fresh relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so Paul's ambition was to show equality among all believers, which is why one of his main emphasis in the book of Romans is Romans 3 and 23 that says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So Paul was trying to help them understand that all of us, regardless to our nationality or whether we are Jew or Gentile or anything else for that matter, we are all in need of salvation that only comes through the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So for him to write the letter was simply to try to merge the people under the blood of Jesus, if you will. And today's times, this is still a needed effort, even amongst believers, to try to bring people together under the umbrella of the love of Jesus Christ is a huge, huge challenge. And you would think that Christians would be the main ones who would always get along, always show love, never show favoritism one toward the other or disdain or look down on anyone. Unfortunately, that is still a challenge even in the 21st century. And so these words penned by the Apostle Paul in Romans 14 and 19 speak to us today. Let's look at it again. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. So notice the two things that Paul lifts up here, that he wanted his congregation that he was pastoring remotely and via a digital message, if you will. In our times, it would have been a digital message. But through letter correspondence, he wanted them to focus on two areas as they interacted with each other. One is peace. The other is edification. So edification literally means building up. Paul wanted the church. He wanted the Christians of his time. And I believe God wants the Christians of our time, vicariously through this written word of Romans 14 and 19, to concentrate more on being peaceful with each other. That means accepting of each other. That means loving toward each other. That means valuing each other. And to edify or build up, encourage, boost the confidence, speak words that are positive one to another. So just a little snapshot of Romans 14 to just help you understand it a little bit more in context. Paul is here discussing the responsibility that believers have to be strong toward each other, to support those who are weaker than the other is. So if we as Christians could ever learn that we need one another and that our support is needed and our our words uh, that are words that give life are necessary, then we can indeed support those who are weaker as we grow stronger and stronger to assist them in growing stronger and stronger. And the gist of Romans chapter 14, verse 19, is simply that mature Christians should never be a stumbling block to Christians who are weak in the faith. Let me say that again. Mature Christians should never be a stumbling block to Christians who are weak, or another word for weak is newer or younger in the faith. In fact, the opposite is true, that the more mature you are, I believe it is evidenced by how valuable you become to some other Christian that is coming along in the same footsteps that you have struggled with. And let's be real with each other. None of us were born saved. None of us were born speaking in tongues. None of us were born dancing around the maternity ward to some Holy Ghost shouting music. No, no, no. We all were born in sin, shaped in iniquity. We all had to be born again. We all had to discover Jesus and his word and apply it to our lives. We all had to submit to the authority of Christ. And even after becoming a Christian and submitting to the authority and lordship of Christ, let's be real, we still had, H-A-D, past tense, struggles. 
And for many of us, we still have HAVE present tense struggles. So we must not ever forget from whence we have come, what we have gone through, what we've struggled through. And we must never become so saved that we forget what it's like to have struggles. And one of the things that I've witnessed in <laughs> almost 30 years of pastoring and 51 years of life in church is that some people become so pious the longer they've been in church or been Christians that they actually kill the young that are coming along. They kill them. They kill their vitality. They kill their spirituality by criticizing them for everything they do wrong, every mistake they make, their wardrobe, and those kinds of things. But these kinds of things are the opposite of what the Apostle Paul was telling the church in Rome. He was telling them, do whatever is possible, make every possible effort to support and encourage and lift one another up. Now, I want you to think about this because remember this series is about when life spins out of control. Well, the church to which Paul was writing, he was writing often from a prison cell. Why is Paul writing from a prison cell? It's very simple because the church in that time was being persecuted. They were still having their feet tied behind a horse with their head bopping against the pavement, pavement because they would not denounce the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They were still having uh, Christians to be placed in hot kettles of burning oil because they would not denounce the Lord Jesus Christ. And quite often in the New Testament, you're reading letters not just because it was the way that they communicated, but because there were small gatherings that would literally meet underground in order to avoid being seen and known in public. And so even the term, the people of the way, had more to it than just a nickname for Christians. To be called a Christ follower was to subject yourself to cruel, and harsh punishment. And so being called the people of the way was another way to start, sort of stay underground. So life had begun to spin out of control for the church at Rome. And so the gist of Romans 14 and 19 again is that mature Christians should never become a stumbling block that would harm the walk of weaker or newer Christians. So maturity then means becoming firm footed for others through our habits, our kindness and our integrity. We should live a life that literally can be firm foundation or firm footing for other young Christians or other people who are coming as in the Church of Rome from different religious experiences that as they come into Christianity, and begin to merge into the ways of Christ. Our lifestyle, our integrity, our kindness, the way that we act toward them should become footing for them to grow and to base their walk with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So let's look again at this passage that is so powerful. Romans 14, 19. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. How would the church you're a member of be better if every member in that church began to do everything possible to lead to peace and to build up one another instead of doing or refusing to do whatever is possible to lead to peace and to build one another up. How would this world be different if everybody practiced Romans 14 and 19, that they sought peace with their fellow individual, their fellow neighbor, their fellow American even. And if they did everything possible to bring, to, bring us to peace and 
for edification. I think, my friends, that life would be entirely different and we'd see an entirely different outcome. So in this session, we've been talking about gathering in peace. And I want to remind you again of our key thematic scripture for this series. Jesus said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. I want you to memorize this verse during these seven weeks or whenever you may be watching so that you can commit it to your memory and remember that even when life goes crazy, you can still find peace when life spins out of control if you know how to practice the love of Jesus Christ. Hey, I love you so much. I appreciate you tuning in. Please like, share, subscribe. Let us know what spoke to you. And don't forget that in the description box below, there is a free PDF workbook that goes along with this teaching. It will help you to really apply these truths to your life. Hey, can't wait to share with you in the next episode. Don't miss session number five. If you haven't seen one, two, and three, go back and check it out. You got time. Make time to do it. It'll bless you. God bless you. See you next week.